Welcome to our reflections on 2020 during this holiday season at the end of the year. Welcome to our reflections on 2020 during this holiday season at the end of the year. In trying to reflect back over this past year, the first impression is that January of 2020 seems more like a century ago, rather than just 12 months ago. Christmas celebrations a year ago were rather normal and typical, of what Claire and I have experienced for many years of ministry, that has largely separated us from family geographically. Little did anyone anticipate what was coming just around the corner. Certainly, the daily new illness and the daily death counts were not anticipated whatsoever. Added to that was the national election campaigns that spent literally billions of dollars. The levels of flat-out lying in the campaign rhetoric reached astounding numbers. And added to that is the horrific damage and destruction of the environment, along with cherished cultural values and norms, done by the current US president. Even worse is the rather cultic, blind loyalty to him that has been exhibited by a significant percent of the American people. But while the national trends and culture provide the backdrop to our individual lives, we still live out our own life with it being shaped, even more by dynamics closer to us. What was 2020 like for me in my own sphere of activity? That angle makes 2020 uniquely personal for each of us. So I begin with my own view of this past year. Then Claire will add her personal insights so that you have a better understanding of our situation living in the Baptist Retirement Community in San Angelo, Texas during 2020. Lauren's View, of 2020 For me personally, 2020 has brought about a greater decline in my physical health than in the previous years. Age has played a greater role in limiting the physical activities that I am able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Interestingly, the impact of the COVID-19 virus pandemic has not been very noticeable. It has mostly been centered in learning to wear a face mask and or shield especially when I leave the apartment. Additionally, it has reared its ugly head in keeping us from attending Sunday school and church worship services on the campus of the church facilities. facilities. That forced us to set up the virtual connections to our church, Southland Baptist Church, via video streaming and Zoom conferencing. So the connection to the church staff and members has been maintained, although just not with our physical presence. While it is not the ideal, it fills in the gap until our world gets past this awful virus and returns to something akin to normalcy. Hopefully that will happen in 2021. Colon related to this church connection has been the weekly phone calls from my deacon minister, Dr. Stephen Snowden. Steve is a professor at Angelo State University and very active in our church. The deacon ministry of Southland Baptist Church set up this outreach where the deacon selected a senior citizen member and began an outreach ministry to the seniors. I eagerly looked forward to 6 p.m. every Monday evening. Usually for about an hour, we discuss issues and reflect on our individual experiences for that day. After spending over 40 years working in higher education as a professor, it is energizing to me to learn Steve's perspective and experiences. To be honest, I have absolutely no interest in ever returning to the university classroom. But this conversation opportunity gives me the chance to reflect back on my experiences at Southwestern Baptist Seminary in Fort Worth and at Gardner-Webb University in North Carolina. The additional opportunity to serve as a guest research professor and or lecturer at the German universities in Bonn. Heidelberg, and Göttingen and the German Baptist Seminary then in Hamburg have not only enlarged my perspective but provide a very contrastive view of education at the university level. This opportunity to interact with a dear Christian professor friend has become one of the bright spots of 2020 for me. This weekly Monday evening conversation with Dr. Snowden has complemented another weekly conversation that has been taking place every Saturday evening at 7.30 p.m. since June of 2008. For many of the years while teaching at Gardner-Webb University in Boiling Springs, North Carolina, 1999-2008, I taught an older men's Sunday school class at the First Baptist Church in Shelby where we were members. When Claire and I made the decision to travel to Cologne, Germany in the spring of 2008 in order to explore possibilities of retirement ministry with the International Baptist Convention, this men's class was very supportive financially and otherwise of this decision. 
Once we arrived in Germany on June 15, 2008, I began making a Skype-based telephone call to Joe Hendricks, the class president of the men's group. Little did we realize that over 12 years later this weekly Saturday evening phone call would still be taking place. We love those men dearly and they have deep interest in our situation as it has evolved over these years. Joe is now in his middle 90s and is for me something of a father figure. Of course, many of the class members in 2008 have now gone on to be with the Lord in heaven. But I am able to stay connected to those still living through Joe who faithfully gives his report to them about Claire and me each week. The FBC of Shelby will always be one of the finest congregations that Claire and I have been a part of. I stay in contact with a couple of the pastors at the church when we were there. This weekly call to North Carolina has continued to be another bright spot in 2020. Although my decline in health has imposed severe limitations on me, perhaps the brightest spot of 2020 has been the advancement of ministry through the Bible study website Cranfordville.com and the social media ministry now to over 15,000 individuals around the world. In reserving no more than an hour each day, I try to interact with those reaching out to me in a chat session or a text message. Almost weekly questions about scripture texts and about the Christian life come and I try to respond very quickly. The Biblical Insights Commentary, equals Bic, remains the ultimate center of ministry activity. This year has brought about the completion of an introductory how-to videos with primary focus on how to interpret the scriptures properly. In the English language Bic Alive series there are 7 videos about 15 minutes each on average. But with the Spanish language Bic Vivo series there are 8 videos in this introductory set. Just a quick glance will display the increasing skills with video production from video 1 in English to video 8 in Spanish. The Adobe system of software from Adobe Bridge, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Dreamweaver, Adobe Audition to Adobe Premiere Pro is the primary set of software programs used for this work. With C&L Ventures being a one-man operation essentially, all of the materials are produced in-house by me. Even with the huge advancement in skills using these programs, I have only begun to scratch the surface in utilizing the full range of capabilities contained in these programs. Alongside of these glowing bright spots in 2020, always there stand the dark spots in the background imposing their limitations on my work and ministry. For me, they overwhelmingly center around my health. The long-standing issues of type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and neuropathy pain have been rather active in 2020. Some progress has occurred through the use of the Dexcom G6 diabetic monitor and the Vega 40 insulin pump system. Now I receive some insulin every 10 minutes 24-7 along with a blood sugar level measure every 5 minutes. This system warns me especially with extreme highs and lows readings. Often the low readings come in the middle of the night. I have some established corrective measures to take when this happens. This year has seen Parkinson's disease and dementia spread deeper into my body with increased consequences. The tremors are increasing, memory gaps growing. Added to this are dramatic balance control and dizziness problems. A recent MRI uncovered a small tumor growing on an auditory nerve in my inner ear. This is a contributing factor, along with Parkinson's and dementia, to the loss of balance. Then, diabetes enters this mixture to mess up my vision with blurriness and double vision. A CAT scan this week has uncovered a small hernia in my stomach region but no definitive answer to the extreme swelling around my stomach. A colonoscopy exam and an EFD exam are scheduled for Jan 7 to try to understand this problem, as well as a couple of lesser issues. These and a few other dark spots have produced negative feelings about 2020. But just as literal light diminishes the glow of darkness, the bright symbols of lighting 2020 keep the darkness at bay and in the background for me. Claire's View of 2020 this past year of 2020 has been an extremely difficult one for our country and the entire world. So many people struggle from day to day. Lauren and I are fortunate to live in the Baptist retirement community where it is safer than most places and the leaders and staff take every precaution to care for all of us. Being retired and living here has been great for us. This year, 
Being the BRC librarian has been interesting. Being able to work with a few others on our library committee has had us working on and off according to the lockdown. At least at this point, the library is in good shape and the residents are happy with it. I had plans of giving a few craft classes to some of the residents in the library this past year, but that didn't work. Perhaps next year whenever things improve I will try again. Lauren and I have been fortunate to have friends from our Sunday school class that took us to and from church each Sunday until COVID-19. Later we were able to watch our worship service on the internet and the Sunday school class on Zoom and be able to converse with each other. I learned this year that I must be a real introvert. I like being at home and working on projects, whether it be quilting or some kind of craft. Watching Christmas movies on the Hallmark Channel, while working on something, is fun. But being an introvert all the time, except for doctor visits is not fun. I don't seem to echo. Blush much now. Between that and being older gives me an excuse. I hope that all of you are able to have a Merry Christmas and we all look forward to being together with family and friends in the near future. God bless you. Claire Cranford What about 2021? While a backward glance over 2020 leaves much to be desired, a forward look into 2021 provides much hope. So I look at 2021 with growing hope and anticipation for lots of rays of brightly shining light. Our society has chosen political leaders with integrity, deep Christian faith, and a firm commitment to justice and equality for all. We have, as a country stepped, back from a plunge into chaos and fascism, and stepped toward a renewed set of democratic principles of governance. Romans 8:38 is proving itself over anew that we know that to all those loving God all things work together for good, to those who are called according to his purpose. I have seen it happen in our society, in our churches, and in our own lives during 2020. Religiously, of course, the Lord reigns supreme and the future lies in his hands. But humanly speaking also generates considerable hope for a better tomorrow. This is not baseless naive optimism. Quite clearly, the world is not past the pandemic virus. Medical and political leaders are warning us that we haven't yet hit bottom with this horrible virus. U.S. society is ruptured and in disharmony. Mammoth social ills are festered almost to the bursting point. But people are coming together to work for common causes of justice, the assistance of those in need, and for the recovery of values of common decency and justice. The year 2021 will most likely be characterized, by this time next year, as the year of healing and restoration. So 2021 holds the genuine promise for a better world, a more just, honest, and equitable society, to make a strong beginning. For Claire and me personally, 2021 conjures up mixed anticipations. Next November, I will hit 80 years of age. Wow! I never expected to live this long. 75 years was my goal and my request to the Lord. The harsh reality, however, is the decline in health that leaves me every day not feeling well or very energetic. I sense my mortality a little more each day. When old age and bad health will join hands to bring my earthly life to its end, only the Lord knows that date. And I gladly entrust it into His hands. Walking each day in the presence of the Lord, I look at each day as a gift from God to be used for His glory. A big part of that gift is a plan. As often asked in our day, what's your plan? You gotta have a plan. Central to my plan for 2021 is to continue to work around doing ministry. This objective now centers on the Biblical Insights Commentary at Granfordville.com. 2020 has meant the creation of 15 videos in the Bic Alive, 7 in English, and Bic Vivo, 8 in Spanish, series. This introductory how-to material has laid out, in detail, the interpretive methodology that underlies the Bic Online Commentary. Now, Beginning with video 16, the interpretation of Paul's letter to the Colossians will continue to be generated digitally starting with Colossians 1 3 to 8. The objective is one video per week, which will complete the revision of Big Volume 15. 
1 Peter, Volume 25 of BIC, will come next. The second objective is to explore ways to more efficiently reach out to the 15,000 plus connections that I have through social media outlets. I have a lot still to learn about managing this ministry opportunity. There's blogging, video conferencing, text messaging, and many other possible outlets for doing ministry. These two objectives can easily consume almost all of my waking hours each day. So the time spent in the office will have to be balanced with doctor's visits and taking care of my health. Sometimes caring for my health seems to be a downhill battle. And it is, to some degree. But, since 2001 I have been very proactive about my health, that battle will continue and intensify. A realistic goal for 2021 is to slow this deterioration down to a crawl, especially on the Parkinson's and dementia sides. Also included in this health objective, is the control of patience, self-awareness, etc. When the world turns slower and slower for you, frustration and self-pity are ever-present temptations. As long as my personal fulfillment comes from ministry to others through the gospel, I will be okay. My projections for 2021 are rather simple at 79 plus years. I want to live to see again the rebuilding of my country as a just, decent, equitable, and honorable place for every resident. I want to be able to see my children and grandchildren again in person. To renew more friendships with colleagues and others. For my precious Claire, to keep her relatively good health so she can minister to others as well. These big picture hopes will guide me during 2021. Now, Claire's thoughts. Hopefully, this year of 2021 is a welcome relief for everyone. I look forward to seeing family and friends again and being able to hug each other instead of waving from a distance. I look forward to seeing the joy on their faces and hearing the laughter. It will also be nice to actually go into a store instead of having all groceries and items delivered. This will be a better time to get back to work in the BRC library and take more pictures of events here. We have so much to be thankful for in this new year with a brighter outlook for us and our country. May you know the blessings of the Lord in 2021. May your life count for the cause of Christ.